Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 17 of The Creative Pause. My name is Susan Padrone, and I am here with my co-host, who I will allow to introduce herself. Hello, I'm Stacey Fay with Jewelry. <laughs> and it's so good to be with you all today. Um, we always like to say this is our time for a little bit of joy, some laughter, some, you know, just sort of sharing like minds with people um, in a time where we're feeling, you know, some difficult emotions. So I hope that we're bringing a smile to your face each day with these episodes. Um, and we always start out our episodes um, with our, how are you doing? <laughs> Which uh, we want to dive into pretty early on here. And then we'll introduce Erica, who's going to do a, a fantastic art project with us and help to lift our spirits if we're not doing so well. Um, so yes, yeah, so the question on the table is how are you doing? And if you're there live, you know, certainly chime in over chat or if you don't feel like it, you can just say it out loud. Or of course, we always say you can write in a journal um, or just find any way to kind of check in, whatever that might be. If you can get some quiet time or even check in with a friend, it can be really helpful um, for you and that other person as well. So uh, I will start. So my how am I doing today is that I'm having a pretty rough day, actually. Um, Susan and I were talking about this earlier that I'm, I think, you know, like all of us, our emotions come in waves and I have sort of sadness uh, that just crept in today. I don't even know why. It started out as kind of anger earlier in the day and I couldn't figure out I was impatient. I was kind of angry. And then as the day went on, I was like, oh, this is sadness, right? Like <laughs> typically anger is always sadness. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm sadness of, of just not having family and friends around um, as you all know, if you've listened to these episodes, I'm due to give birth, you know, in a couple of weeks and, and knowing that I'm going to be doing that, you know, thankfully with my partner by my side, but otherwise not with anybody else. It, it's a strange, it's a strange thing. And so, um, yeah, trying to navigate those, those feelings of sadness, but I, I did want to share that because when I realized earlier that it was sadness, I thought, you know what, everybody's feeling this and it's important to sort of name it and put it out there. And and talk about that. Um, so yeah, so my day is not awesome, but you know, hopefully with naming it what it is, I'm able to sort of move through it and, and get to a better place. So how about you, Susan? Yeah, I can definitely relate to the sadness feelings. Um, not so much today, today I'm feeling better, but I, I've noticed that during the week, I find that because I'm either like in full on mom mode or when I'm not in mom mode, then I'm focusing on this or work. Um, I'm distracted. My brain is like constantly going and the weekends, my brain is a lot more quiet and it's in those quiet moments that like the sadness just comes in and hits me like a truck. And that's definitely what happened on Saturday. I think it was, um, that I, we FaceTimed with my in-laws and um, my dad has been sending recorded songs and bedtime stories to my son and to my two nephews every night. And there's just like something about like something that my mother-in-law said that like, and the song that my dad had sent that kind of like both really like triggered those sad feelings in me. And it, I really like wasn't even aware that they were there or that they were present until like Saturday night. And I just was really upset. And it took me a while to just kind of like work through it and process it, acknowledge it. And um, then, you know, Tony and I watched a movie that was a comedy and that helped. <laughs> and, you know, I was just grateful for him to like, hold that space for me to allow me to process and go through all those stages so that I can go on to the next day and, you know, do other things. Um, but today I, I feel like I'm doing okay. You know, it's a Monday and I have this to look forward to and I'm thrilled that Erica's on. So, um, yeah, I'm doing okay. But Erica, how are you, my dear? Uh, this has a, a, been a good day for me because I had something to focus on. Um, you know, I am not working at all right now. Schools are closed, so I don't get to teach art, um, which I love to do. So this is just kind of like a wonderful thing. I've been holding, you know, maybe once a week remote art classes on my own. But once again, it's just 
you miss that connection. So I love the idea of what you're doing here and that there's people that can kind of interact um, while it's going on. Um, so having something to focus on and look forward to, I woke up in a good mood and I just kind of let that energy and a lot of coffee <laughs> keep me moving forward today. Uh, but any day that I'm getting to make something, that's usually enough to, if not cheer me up, distract me enough that I can get out of my own head for a little bit and just sort of focus on literally the task at hand and doing something tactile. And I, I love the way that that distracts me. Um, and then when I'm done and I have something that's there, that's just something that's like a constant reminder, like, okay, let's just take this one day at a time. Let's find something to do today even if that thing is, is to rest. So, you know, yesterday was a rest day for me and today it was nice to wake up with something to do. So I'm, I'm really excited to do this with all of you and that's how I'm doing right now. Yay, I'm so <laughs> glad. Thanks for being here. Um, and I feel like everything that you just shared really ties perfectly into the quote that you shared with us too. So I'm gonna share my screen so that everybody can see it. And there we go. Okay, so the quote that Erica shared with us today says, art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. It's by Pablo Picasso. And I mean, Eric, I'd love to hear how you came across this quote, of course, as like an artist, I'm sure. <laughs> Picasso in all realms is on your radar, um, but it just it definitely feels so appropriate for what you're gonna be doing with us today and what you do in your everyday life too. I mean, you're constantly making art, whether it's in the classroom, independently, or with your beautiful cooking and baking. But tell me how you came across this quote and why you chose it today. Well, I tend to look up quite a few art quotes um, just to kind of provide daily inspiration for my students when we're in class. So it's sometimes a little bit more interesting because I teach elementary age, kindergarten through eighth. So they don't necessarily get too into artist biographies. That's not always the case, but usually. Um, but something like a single quote, they can tend to grab onto very easily and it kind of gives them a little hint at who that artist was. Um, this one is always one that has resonated very deeply um, with me. I struggle with anxiety and depression all the time I have since I was a small kid. Um, so for me, art has always, always, always been an outlet and kind of a safe haven and a place to go to when I'm not feeling so great. Um, and it's really something that I want to teach my students. It's important to me to not only teach them technical art skills, but to teach them how to think like an artist is how I put it to them. Um, and part of that is just taking that time sometimes to unwind and sit down and create something and let your feelings out in a healthy way and you know connect with other people that way and I don't know I just think it's very important um, for them to kind of understand that that art can be even if it's not something they want to do with their life in any sort of professional way it can always be that that outlet that they have. I love that. I, I felt very similar when I was teaching music, you know, in that way, it's like, this is a form of self expression and something that you can connect to. And it doesn't have to be something that you do professionally, but something that can, again, like, like you said, be that creative outlet, that emotional outlet, whatever you need it to be. And I, I love that. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> So now I get the pleasure of formally introducing Erica and Erica and I met on a photo shoot um, of like a year and a half ago I guess it was now yeah. and we've just stayed in touch ever since and I've been able to like really just watch all of the beautiful things that she creates on social media and she herself is a self-taught private chef she's an artist and she, as she said she's an elementary art teacher as well and she shared with us that she believes that love is a solution to most of life's problems and that creating is our true purpose on earth. So without any 
more delay, I will hand it over to Miss Erica, who is going to be teaching us today how to make some really fun, beautiful things. So thank you, Erica. Well, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here with you all today and to get to do one of the things I love best in the world, which is teach art. Um, I have two very simple and easy to do mini lessons for you today that don't involve any sort of um, out there materials. It's most likely stuff that you have lying around the house um, or stuff that you can either make or substitute pretty easily. Um, but our focus today, uh, Susan just touched a little bit on it, um, but I really do believe that our purpose here is to create. It's to take raw materials um, and turn them into something greater using our mind, our hands, and our ingenuity. Um, art is a great way to outlet our emotions, whether they're happy, sad, or somewhere in the middle. Um, it's a great way to connect with other people and to find your kindred spirits in the world. Um, and I really truly, truly do believe in the healing power of art, um, whether it's creating it or viewing it in a way that it touches your heart. Um, so we're gonna try to give a little bit of ourselves that little art therapy today. Um, in this time when we're all missing human connection so much, uh, that's what influenced really the themes of what we're doing today. Um, and I do have two simple lessons for you. The first, we are going to create some really cool origami hearts. And we're gonna do that just simply with some squares of patterned paper. Um, I have scrapbook paper, I have a ton of it. I am a supply hoarder. Um, but if you don't, you can simply make your own patterns. Um, because this is a simple fold, it's not overly complicated, you can use just regular white computer paper and maybe draw your own design on it. Draw it before or draw it after, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Um, but this will not require any kind of specific super thin origami paper because we're not doing layers and layers of folds. So after we make our adorable hearts, um, I'm also going to show you how to do two super, super easy things with them. You don't have to do this with them. You can come up with your own ideas as well, but I just wanted to give you a little direction so that you had some more purpose in creating them. So the first is we can make this super easy heart garland. And the only additional supplies you will need for this is some yarn, string, twine, whatever you have. Um, and you'll need a little bit of tape or glue, whatever adhesive you have. Um, either will work just fine. The other thing that we can make with these origami hearts is just with a simple piece of tape, we can turn these into an envelope or a little love note or maybe just a little positive encouraging message um, that you can slide through a friend's mailbox or leave on their porch. Or I don't think you could actually technically mail this, but you never know, put it in another envelope and mail it. <laughs> the second lesson that we are going to do, um, I know, I don't know about you guys, but I am missing hugs. I am lucky to be quarantined with my husband, he's not home most of the time because he's a mailman, so he's still making sure he gets your mail. Um, but I miss hugging my family, my friends, everyone. So we're gonna make up for that in kind of our own little creative way. And we're gonna learn how to draw a hug today. All you will need for this is a paper. You don't need any kind of fancy drawing or sketching paper, whatever paper you have is fine. You'll want a pencil, most likely with an eraser. Um, and if you are going to continue it, then you'll want some kind of black marker to outline with and whatever you like to color with, whether that's colored pencil, marker, crayon. If you have the right paper, you can even paint it. That's all up to you. But we're going to learn how to draw a hug in a very, very simple way just by using the letter S, okay? So if you are ready to create some virtual hugs with me and maybe create a little bit of socially distant safe love. Um, I am going to move us over to the desk. Just bear with me. We're going to shift angles here very quickly. I'll see you in a moment, but I won't see you. You'll just hear me. Okay. There we go. Just move to this a little here, guys, so we just see the desk and not all this other stuff. Alrighty. So up first, we are going to dry the origami hearts. This size was made with six inch paper squares. 
and the smaller size was made with four inch paper squares, but you can use whatever size paper you have. You do want it to be square. Um, the simplest way <laughs> to do that is with a ruler, which I just dropped, but that's okay. And you'll just wanna measure your paper on your shortest end, measure it down on both sides on your longest end, make a couple of dots, connect them, and cut it. That's gonna be the easiest way to make a square without your paper cutter, which I happen to have, because I end up cutting a whole lot of paper with what I do. So give me a second to grab this ruler. There we go. So if your paper is eight and a half inches across, you're gonna to wanna to measure eight and a half down on one side and eight and a half down on the other. And this is the safest way to make sure that it's actually square and that you're not doing it at an angle or anything. And then I do just want to connect those dots that I drew. And that is going to give me a square. I would just want to cut off this bottom piece and this top piece left will be my nice square that I have to work with. Since I already pre-cut my pattern paper, that is what I am going to use. Um, and you are going to love this. This is a very, 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 very simple fold. I'm just gonna take one. I'm gonna move this white paper just because, you'll see why in a second. So if you have the pattern paper, I wanna hold it with my blank side up. And the first two folds that we're going to do to create our hearts are not going to be permanent folds. What I mean by that is we're gonna fold to make the crease and then we're going to unfold it. And I am going to hold this like a diamond and I'm gonna to touch my opposite corners. So I wanna bring this corner up. I wanna line it up as best I can. And if your paper isn't perfectly, perfectly square, um, you don't have to worry about that too much. This is a pretty forgiving fold. I know in a lot of more complicated origami designs, you really need everything to be super crisp but this one has a lot of leeway. So, and then I wanna open it back up. We're gonna rotate it and do the same thing this way. So I wanna to touch my corners again, my opposite corners. Bring it down and make my crease. So now what I should have is a diamond that now looks like a kite. I've got those kind of four equal triangles there. I wanna take my top corner and I wanna bring it to my center point that I created by making my creases. So that center point right there, I just want this top corner to hit it and then I wanna make a nice crease. Now I wanna do almost the same thing with the bottom, but I'm not gonna bring it to the center point. I'm gonna bring it all the way up to the top and I can still see my line, my nice, center line that I have. So that helps me keep everything straight. So I'm gonna line up my point with my center line there at the very top of my paper. Pull it down and crease it. Okay, so this just came straight up to the top there. Believe it or not, we are two folds away from creating a heart. And they're identical folds. So what I want to do is I want to take this bottom edge and I want to line it up along my center line here. So I take it and I'm gonna pull it up this way. And I'm really gonna make sure that this point connects with that center line that I have right at the top edge of my paper. Hold it, I can pull it down and then crease it. And you can kind of see half a half a heart here already. Then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the other side. I've got my bottom edge here and I want to fold that so that it's right up against the center line here. So I pull it up and I really want to try to make sure that my edges match. So I'm gonna get it as close to this one as I can. Once again, our aim is not perfection. We just wanna do our best. I'm gonna hold it and I can make my crease. And this is your heart. Now you can be finished right here if you kind of like this pointed edge or for a more rounded edge like the one here. 
we just have one little simple step here. And it's actually a great step if you're gonna make the garland because it does the majority of your garland work for you. So I just want to flatten these points out. Um, and to keep it straight, I'm gonna make sure that my tips always touch my little center lines that I have here. So that'll make sure that they're nice and straight and not crooked. And I just wanna fold down a tiny flap. And I wanna do that on the other side as well. Just a tiny flap. I just usually eyeball it. I don't take the time to measure it. You can kind of see if they're even or not. If you want to take the time and use your ruler to make it extra neat, you can, but I don't think it's super necessary. And I also want to do that same fold back on these side points here. And I just want to fold them in. So you'll have these little tabs here. And from the front, you have your beautiful heart. So very quickly, I want to show you how simple it is to take this and turn it into a garland. And once again, we will be utilizing these little flaps that we folded down to get our nice soft rounded edges at the top of our heart. They make the perfect thing to hold our yarn. So I will show you the completed gar garland, but I will show you how simple it is to attach these as well. So once again, we have our completed garland here. And if you'll see on the back, it's just like I said, there is just the yarn stretched from tab to tab, and it is connected with just a little piece of tape in this case. You can also use glue, um, any kind of craft glue. I would say anything like a school glue might be a little bit weak, um, but that said, these are pretty light, so you, you might be able to get away with it if that's all you have. Just give it a shot and make sure you hold it down nice and long to dry. But I used tape for this. So I just want to show you very quickly. I do have my yarn here. So I would want to leave enough of an end so that it can be used to tie or attach whatever you're using your garland for. So you want to leave a nice little end of yarn here before you start attaching your hearts. And then I literally just lay it down. Okay. I'm kind of fold it under there. It's gonna move a little bit, but that's okay. And then using my clear scotch tape here, that's what I'm using. I take off one piece, but I don't even need all that. So I, I'm gonna rip it in half. So I have two smaller pieces. And then just kind of making sure that my yarn's up there nice and tight with one hand and holding it, I'll apply my tape with my other hand. Like so. And then I do the same thing on the other side. I just stretched it over nice and tight um, within the heart itself so that your heart stands nice and straight. I'm gonna hold it with one finger and apply my tape with the other. If I want to tape down these little flaps, I can. Um, it's not necessary, but I certainly can. But just like that, we have our first heart on our garland. So you can vary the sizes you use, um, or you can keep them all the same size. That's up to you. You can make them as long, as short as you want. And you could even, I guess, just make a little single hanging heart. I don't, I'm sure you could think of something cute to do with that. Um, so that's the first little short thing that we can do with our origami hearts that we learned how to fold. Uh, but I want to show you that simple trick to turn it into an envelope as well, because I think it'd be really funny, or not fun, but very cute to surprise somebody with a little love note um, inside one of these. But anyway, so this is one that I already folded, but as you can see, this front flap opens pretty easily. So all I have to do, all I have to do to turn this into an envelope is take a tiny piece of tape, okay, and apply it there so that this front flap, because now you have a really cool, like, pockety folder thing here, where you could, you could probably give somebody flowers in one of these or whatever else uh, cool things that we're, we're learning how to make, um, but you could also certainly just add in a cute little note or card, one you made, one you bought, and uh, leave that in somebody's doorstep. I think they would be very, very cheered up by that. So yeah, that is how we make our origami hearts, our origami heart garlands, and our origami heart envelopes. Um, and very quickly, I am gonna clear off this desk here, but you should get your paper and your pencil ready because we are going 
to learn how to draw a hug in the easiest way ever. Um, my students are always very intimidated by anything that involves drawing, drawing the human body um, because it's quite difficult to do. Uh, but in this case, we're going in kind of like a cartoony manner. Um, we're not worrying too much about proportion or pop proper body structure or anything. But that said, by using a very familiar subject and a familiar form, um, we will be able to create something that is obviously a hug to the viewer, okay? Whoever you're um, or giving it to or keeping it, whatever you wanna do with it. So we do need our pencil and our blank piece of paper. I always try to have an eraser handy because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, but I'm gonna attempt to not be too much of a perfectionist right now because I, wanted, I really do want you to see how simple this is. If you can write the letter S, then you can draw a hug, okay? And just a quick reminder, your finish is not going to look exactly like this because we are really just gonna focus on the basic forms and you'll be able to add whatever details as far as the facial features, the hair, maybe you don't want yours to be naked, <laughs> maybe you wanna give them clothes, maybe you wanna add a different background elements, maybe you don't even want yours to be human. Um, maybe you want to have some hugging cats or or maybe hugging unicorns or tacos or whatever you can think of because basically you can anthropomorphize I almost said that word right anything and add arms to it and it'll be clear that it is hugging so anyway we see our s here we see our s here that is all we really need so i want to make my s so that the individual loops are somewhat long and somewhat skinny because they're gonna be our arms and we don't want dinky little arms. I'm gonna write, do not write what I'm about to write on here. I just want us to be very clear that this is arm of figure one and this is arm of figure two, okay? However else you wanna create these, those are gonna be your two arms for your two figures. So the next thing I would do is on this guy, we have our kind of our arms, so this would be the shoulder area, which connects to our neck, so I wanna give them a neck. And I'm just gonna go pretty simple on this. We're not gonna do a ton of detail, but I do wanna make the rest of my head. Now, if you're doing some kind of other um, creature, animal, something science fiction, whatever you wanna make hugging, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be this head shape. Just know that you can take whatever artistic uh, license you want with this to make it your own and to make it something that you're excited about drawing. Um, I kind of went with the themes that I went with because I love cats. And I know Earth Day is coming up, so I kind of wanted to make some little nature people. Um, and then you just really want to keep this very simple. This would be our back and going into our legs. Now, depending on, this is gonna be a side view, so you're really not gonna see both legs, but if you wanted to make it more of a three-quarter view and add the second leg, you could do that pretty simply. And this would obviously also be if you're wearing pants or you have bare legs. If you're doing a skirt, you wouldn't even have to put that line. Keeping in mind, when you're hugging, you're typically facing the other person, so that's kind of how we're going with this. So person two would also, have their neck and you can make them as close or as far as far as you want. Maybe you want them almost smooching or maybe you wanna keep them further apart. That's completely, once again, you got some artistic license there. Do whatever you feel. Add my second head. Once again, we've got our kind of our neck area, our back area. We've got our second or our arm two person. Our second person's uh, shoulder would be just about here, but they're behind person one, so we're gonna have that overlap, underlap area. Coming down, and then once again, we'll have our leg area here. Personal body too. You can make them the same height, you can make them different heights. All of those are the kind of little details that you can feel free to add as you please. So just because I don't wanna leave them completely blank faced, let's do, I like my little happy closed eyes. That's what all my students are into. They're all into drawing like the manga, I guess, style, um, like the animated. So they always make like really cute, like squinty faces. So that became kind of my obsession lately, those little cute squinty faces. So I'm just gonna kind of demarcate where my eyes would be. If you wanna give them noses, 
you just kind of carve in your nose to your round head. Oops, that doesn't have an eraser. I've used all that eraser up. So instead of a blank face now, we can kind of give them a little nose, a little indent for our mouth. I, I don't know about you, but I don't want any sad hugging people, so I'm gonna give them a smile. And maybe uh, But who knows? Let's be let's be inclusive. Maybe maybe even during social distance, hugging isn't really your thing. So you're kind of just upset accepting this hug. <laughs> we'll give you a little meh, meh face there. Once again, from here, you can add whatever kind of details you like, uh, as far as getting creative with different types of hair or maybe you want them not facing so sideways and you want kind of front facing you can do animals you can keep it black and white you can do color um, but this basic is how you're gonna draw a hug with an s um, you can always play with the length and the shape but this is the simple way to do it if you want to go more realistic and turn these into hands i'll tell you right now hands are one of the hardest 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 things to draw Bodies are hard in general, hands are even harder, but you can very simply take this S and make it more refined. Maybe you don't want this, um, you know, this kind of non-anatomical arm. You just want to think of the parts of your arm. You want to add that elbow. We tend to thin out as we get towards our wrist. And then think about how your position of your hand when you hug somebody, you're usually kind of open-handed. So if you want to add, a realistic hand. I'm not going to go too detailed here because I'm not so good at drawing hands, but you could do it pretty simply, okay? You just want to want to play with the proportion that you've given yourself, a simple basic structure using your S. You would do the same thing with your top person, okay? And if you wanted to add little details like clothes, you just want to kind of add your lines where they need to be, all right? But I think that's gonna about cover uh, our little lessons for today. So I really hope that you enjoyed them. Um, just once again, so you can see some finished products. We've got that and we've got our cute little heart garlands. So you have got all the supplies you need to love bomb. I don't know, your favorite neighbor, your relative that you can't see. Um, giving somebody art is a great, great way to tell them that you love them, you miss them and you were thinking about them because it's something that you took your time and made. So uh, don't just think about these as throwaways. They're definitely something that you can either use to cheer yourself up in your own home, or you can spread the wealth and give them to somebody that you love. That's gonna be my piece. I'm gonna shoot it back to Susan. <laughs> Yay, Erica, that was so much fun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am I'm like still so proud of my, my little heart. Um, I, wrote, I wrote in the chat, well, I, like, mine actually looks cute. And Stacy said that she's never done origami in her life. And she feels that her look, hers looks cute too. So thank you for sharing that with us today. And I mean, I'm just like, mm, I'm just so proud of my little heart. I like it too. Look at that. It's so cute. It's so cute. And then my people too. I mean, I need to, I need yeah. to help them up, but they're, uh, no worries. Yeah, they're going to take some finesse, but yeah. dude, they look great. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to be kissing this person. I think this is my husband. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love it. So cute. Yes, I love seeing your finished art, so please share it with me. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I, I mean, I, it's funny because whenever we have a guest on the show that does something like artistic, um, especially like visual art and something that is accessible, you know, I'm always like, oh, I wonder if like my son would like to do this too. But, and I would love to include him, but even if he's not interested, I find that I'm still like doing these things for me yeah. and I'm still <laughs> really getting so much joy out of it. And so I'm very grateful for you for <laughs> doing this for us, with us, and, you know, just like getting to create, like, you know, if nothing well, else. I was grateful for the purpose. So thank you for giving me a reason to do something so fun. So I loved it. <laughs> of course. Well, and I love that we can weave our kids in too. Like I was thinking, you know, I can make a bunch of these hearts. 
um, with or without Julian next to me, and then my son Julian, and then he can help color them, and we can then make yeah. the garland together, which would be really nice, and kind of hang it up somewhere in the house, and yeah. I think it's lovely. I'm so glad you like it. That makes my day. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I know um, my son and I have been watching all sorts of um, YouTube drawing videos, and I, I can't wait to like show him some of yours to Erica so he can like participate and create things. And I, I just think it's one of the, the great things about, you know, the time that we're in right now is just having the time to create and explore and utilize this time to just do things that maybe we wouldn't have done otherwise yeah. and yes. it's it just that makes me happy and I'm really grateful that you got to be with us today and that you'll be with us again soon which I am thrilled about as well to show off some of your other amazing talents so our guests will get to see a little bit more of Erica in the, the not too distant future so that'll be good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just wanted to say too, for anybody who is listening and listening to the recording, please share your your, um, your hearts and your drawings yes. um, and tag Erica and us. We'd love to see them and see what you guys have come up with. Absolutely. That's my favorite part. <laughs> and then Erica, I know you've been doing some of your um, art videos on Facebook. Do you have a YouTube channel as well or is it exclusively Facebook? Yes, I have taken to uploading them to YouTube because I realized a lot of people just couldn't either find them or wanted to do them on their own time. So I now have one concise uh, place you can go. It is Mrs. Deutsch's Remote Classroom, which I know is a mouthful. Um, but if you, you know, if you want to give it a shot, that's at Mrs. MRS Deutsch's D-E-U-T-S-C-H-S, -S -S, <laughs> Remote Art Classroom. Great, we'll definitely link that in the show description and the, the YouTube description too, so that people can, can check out all of your, your fun videos too. Awesome, well thank you I so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Erica, this is great. This is the most I've smiled all day, so I, <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, as I know everybody else will as well. So we always close our episode with a Mary Oliver quote, and that is, what will you do with your one wild and precious life? Um, and I think today's a good reminder of when will you incorporate art? <laughs> like how can you do something very simple and artistic to make, you know, make your day a little brighter? So, yeah. Thank you so much, Erica. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I love what you guys are doing. And I can't wait to watch the rest of uh, next, this week's episodes. You have my, one of my favorite people on the whole planet. You have the Wondersmith coming on Thursday and my, my head explodes. Like I cannot wait. Very exciting. <laughs> yeah, she's one of my favorite people too. The, yeah, we're very excited. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. And we'll be live again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And um, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. <laughs>